Hello, my name is Taylor Forstner, and today I'm going to teach you a little bit about the part of your brain called the amygdala. So you're probably wondering what even is the amygdala and what does it do? Well, the amygdala is a part of our brains that is thought to form the core of our neural system for processing fearful and threatening stimuli. This includes detection of threats and activation of appropriate fear-related behaviors in response. The amygdala also plays a pivotal role in memory. For example, if you have an emotional response to something, the amygdala tags that memory in such a way so that it is better remembered. However, the amygdala is best known for driving our fight or flight response. The fight or flight response is also known as the amygdala hijack as it quickly triggers a response before our prefrontal cortex or the decision-making part of our brain has time to overrule it. Therefore, the emotional brain takes over the thinking brain, making it a hijack. Here is an example of fight. Here is an example of flight. The amygdala is part of the limbic system and is a collection of nuclei found in the temporal lobe. The amygdala is made up of a small pair of almond-shaped regions with one in each cerebral, cerebral hemisphere. It is likely that the amygdala also is also behind fears that are out of our control, such as the fear of falling or having a jump scare when we hear a loud noise. However, numerous studies have been performed where researchers remove the amygdala from rats and observe that the rats no longer fear anything, including cats. In humans, amygdala damage can cause impaired recognition of emotional facial expressions, especially fearful ones. Additionally, it is believed that damage to the amygdala plays a role in post-traumatic stress disorder. Furthermore, there are cases of people who either have a disorder with their amygdala or simply do not have one or a functioning one. The most famous case is that of a woman called SM. This woman, SM, has no fear response at all. She does not have a functioning amygdala or simply does not have one. She has participated in many studies, such as holding snakes, going through haunted houses, and she has no fear response to things like this. In fact, she's even been mugged at knife point, but because she has no fear response, she often puts herself in dangerous situations. Some emotions, typically I think basic ones, like fear, are ones that probably have one location. I think that the experience of fear is probably has to do with either the amygdala per se, or at least amygdala being a channel. So removing the amygdala for sure, makes you not experience that. We have a unique patients, a few that I got to work with, who are people that are born with a unique disorder that, that makes it such that they don't have amygdala. And, and that would be quite dangerous, wouldn't it? Yes, I, I had experience of working with one patient. She is a, a woman who, in fact, does not have feeling of fear whatsoever. And this makes her life very difficult. She, she, she too trusting. So if she would meet you, she immediately hugs you and, and feels a that's too idea. too that's comfortable with you. Idea. She doesn't have a sense of uh, distance the way we do. So if mm. I started speaking to you like this, let's demonstrate. Oh. Close. You, what happened just now is that, <laughs> <laughs> that you immediately had that your amygdala immediately came to life and started firing <laughs> because because there's some kind of distance that is too much. Yeah. All of those mechanisms are things that our bodies through evolution were uh, our brains basically were uh, uh, creating in order to avoid danger and things that are uncomfortable. She doesn't have that. So it's very dangerous for her yeah. to just exist like that. Well, overall, we really rely on our fully functioning amygdala in order to keep us safe and allow us to respond quickly to danger and threats. Additionally, we believe that the amygdala plays a role in helping us remember our emotional experiences.